This episode is sponsored by Rockstar Connect at rockstarconnect.com. Let Rockstar Connect help your brand become a rock star in your industry and create local celebrity status in your sphere through monthly meetups and networking events. Find the next Rockstar Connect event in the Triangle or in your area at rockstarconnect.com slash events. Thank you for listening to the Guys Who Do Stuff podcast. Visit guyswhodostuff.com. You probably shouldn't Google that. All right. Welcome to the Guys Who Do Stuff podcast. I'm Joe. And I'm Josh. This is the show where we help you get unstuck, tell a better story, and have a good answer to the question, what are you doing today? And today we are coming to you from the world of beer in Fayetteville. We're going to be interviewing people throughout the night. From this networking event, we're here at a Rockstar Connect networking event, and we're talking to Donovan. So Donovan, Donovan tell us a little bit about yourself and about your company, man. Uh, yeah, so um, my company is Real Production and Photography. Um, you can always find me at realprophoto.com. Um, don't be confused, it's R-E-E-L. 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 So yeah, so I started out doing photography because I'm a Marine veteran. Oh, okay. And... Uh, I saw Combat Camera when we were actually in Iraq and Afghanistan, and I got all of their photos and videos. And I was like, it looks amazing, you know, just freezing time and creating those memories. Yeah. So I started my business, and my business logo was actually one shot is all it takes. We won't miss. Ooh, and, oh, ooh, nice. Sniper like, talk, brother. That's it. Yeah, so right now, I'm actually expanding my business to promote other businesses through uh, video as well as uh, photos. So if they want to spice their their websites up or their social medias they contact me we go out there do the shoot and not only do we give them the footage for them to promote but we also promote it on our platform as well because if they grow we also grow if yeah. we grow they grow that's and cool that's so you, you help them with the, the content but you also promote their content on your network as well that's it that's pretty cool. That's oh, great. double whammy. That is. I mean, I think it's a win-win situation. So uh, if you could, talking to business owners, we primarily talk to entrepreneurs, business owners through our podcast and in our audience. If there was a secret sauce, what would you help people understand it's important that you do? I would say social media presence. Um, and not just photos, but high quality professional video as well. I think it's crazy. Like my kids, Josh, I don't know if your son's got into it yet, but my kids are watching way more YouTube than TV now. I can't get them to watch shows on Netflix. They just want to watch videos on YouTube. I watch more YouTube than I do TV. So are you calling me a kid? You do too? Really? Yeah. Huh. Same here. I wake up in the morning. If I don't want to roll out of bed at the exact time, I'll look at the news and then I go to YouTube. Are there any big photographers, uh, videographers you look up to on YouTube or in the world out there that Peter, you'd like to meet one day? Peter McKinnon. Mm. I, I, I watch a lot of his videos. His instructional videos are amazing, and I actually learn a lot from him. Very cool. So if somebody were to, to go with you or a company like you to produce some high-quality content for YouTube, how do you recommend that they use that content? How do they let people know that that exists? If you have employees, inform them and tell them to share it on their social media as well. If you want your employees to be sharing your content, it better be good content. Exactly. <laughs> it better be something they're proud of sharing. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of times I recommend businesses who are going to do those promotional videos, put your employees in the video. At least you got one view, like that guy's mom. You can't watch yeah. that video. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. Well, thank you for your service and thank you for being with us here today to share a little bit about what you do and why you do it. But where's your Where's your ideal client base? My ideal client base is foundation of my business is real estate photography and videography so i definitely want to continue to touch bases with realtors you like shooting stuff that doesn't move and it doesn't have a pulse right <laughs> that that was my foundation and right on right but if walls could talk you know i hear that um but right now we are expanding to promote north carolina businesses and professionals and we actually started up a new youtube channel catering to specific north carolina events the real north carolina you guys are bringing attention to local businesses. We're kindred spirits, man. That's what we love to do here. Love it, love it. Well, that's awesome. It's been awesome talking to you, Donovan. You're a real guy who does stuff. We appreciate it. And people can find out more about you where? At realprophoto.com. Donovan, everybody. Do this stuff. Relevant Media Solutions believes that marketing is storytelling. 
They help take business owners from feeling scared that their ineffective website is losing business, embarrassed of their online presence, and worry that their customers are not finding them, to business leaders with a useful website that grows their business and sees customers return. Let them help you tell your story. Visit RelevantMediaSolutions.com today. We are live at the Rockstar Connect event in Fayetteville, a world of beer. And we are sitting here with Genu Yang. Yeah, tell us a little bit about yourself and your company, Genu. Well, uh, my company is based out of the uh, West Coast. Okay. So I'm a subsidiary of uh, Free Equity Group. So they are a startup uh, financial services company and they are actually expanding eastward okay so i'm actually a regional vice president for that company and i'm branching out to do my little niche out here right and i am focusing in the raleigh area and building some folks in the charlotte area as the financial of the east coast you know good yeah. place to be you know are you from la originally or west coast where, where, where yeah from good old stockton california yeah maybe i knew it for something about you is very california <laughs> maybe it's the tan i don't know <laughs> So uh, tell me a little bit about the main problem that you solve for your clients. We help people transfer money to their loved ones tax-free. Okay. So it's uh, so who would be an ideal client for you guys? For us, it's almost everybody, you know. Everybody could be an ideal client, you know. Uh, to maximize this um, product that we have, um, probably somebody anywhere from 25 to 35 okay. will probably benefit this to the max. So what do you what do you love about what you get to do? Man, what I love about it, I just like to do, uh, hear people's stories and people's different plans of how they plan for the future. Yeah. And it's almost scary to say that nobody, most people have no plans. Oh, yeah. You hear that a lot. Like, <laughs> What's your plan for the future? I need one. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's where you come in, Gina. <laughs> right, right. Get the, how do you get the plan out of people? <laughs> really, man. Like, I don't know why with, with um, Americans. They're really hesitant about speaking about money or financials. Yeah. You know, and without that, you know, you can't really have a plan for yourself. You can't really yeah. plan, you know. That's true. I can think of like definitely older Americans. Like I think my, my parents' generation and stuff, like they are not comfortable talking about money. It's almost viewed as like being rude. Like, right, oh, you should right. talk about money. It's almost like you're bragging about yourself, yeah. you know, but that's not the case. <laughs> you're talking with, in your case, you're talking with someone that's helping you with your financial plan. So you should give yourself a pass. Thank you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody trying to help you out. So uh, if there was a if there was a secret sauce that you could pass down to your clients, like if you started doing this regularly today, it would have a compounding effect on your plan. What would that secret sauce be? Right. The rule of 72. Ooh, yeah. What's the rule of 72? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah. You Tell divide you 72 do. by the rate of return or your interest, and that'll tell you when you will double your money. Okay. So if you divide 72 by eight, I think you'll compound and you'll make money around, double your money every 15 years, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. If the agent could do math. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. So how will people reach out to you and get a hold of you, Jenna? Well, uh, you can contact me at cgangfinancial at outlook.com. My um, number is 828-302-3933. And that's based out of the boonies. Ah. Based out of the boonies. <laughs> where are you based? Uh, where are you based? So I'm actually based here in uh, Durham, North Carolina. Yeah. Okay, but, great. Yeah, my number is still out there because me and the majority of my teammates are still out in the mountaineers yeah. of uh, North Carolina. In yeah. the mountains. Yep. Oh, their teammates are in the mountains and work like Appalachians. So yep. you work with hillbillies. Hillbillies. Yep. Nice, brother. <laughs> ah, hey, okay. we are the hillbillies of um, Southeast Asia. Oh, right <laughs> you on. You guys haven't heard about the Mongs. No. That's what we are, man. We're like hillbillies of Asia. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Well, they got a lot of wisdom in the hills. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Well, thanks for being on with us today, Gina. Yeah, appreciate yeah. meeting yeah. you, man. Thank you for having me. Freedom nice. Equity Group. Is that right? That's right. Love the name. Do this stuff. And today we are coming to you from Fayetteville at the World of Beer. We're here we're at the Rockstar Connect event. Yeah. Having a lot of fun talking to business owners. Today our guest is Jay, Jay Scott, Scott Rudder. Rudder. Thanks so much for being on the show. Tell us a little bit about your business. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Scott Rudder, I'm with First Citizens Bank. So I am uh, based out of downtown Raleigh and basically cover the whole entire state of North Carolina. 
Okay. So I'm a consumer and business lending specialist with them. What, and, the, he- what the heck brings you down here to Fayetteville from Raleigh? Well, I actually happen to be an event host of uh, Rockstar Connect myself. So I run my own event. It's called Sphere Networking. And uh, that takes place at Rush Hour Carding. And Stephen David Elliott, the founder of Rockstar Connect, asked me to come down and help you know support the event down here. So here I am. What about you has you uniquely passionate and gifted to solve the problems that you love solving for your customers? Well, that's a that's a long answer. So um, <laughs> we got time. All right, all right. So I've been in banking now for about just shy of three years. So I was actually recruited into banking um, off of LinkedIn. Really? So, yeah. What a kind of weird story. How you got in? Yeah. Well, I was in furniture uh, before that. So I was with Aaron's Furniture for ten years. Okay. Uh, retail management. Um, prior to that, I was a business owner for five years when I lived in South Florida. And then before that, it was all retail, big box retail background. So yeah, how I ended up in banking, no freaking idea. Like I said, you know, a recruiter kind of generically reached out to me and just said, hey, you know, is, do you or anyone in your network perhaps have an interest in banking? So of course, always leave my options open. I said, hey, you know, I'm interested in at least hearing what you have to say. And they said, you know, you have the leadership, we'll teach you the banking. So went into a bank, was a branch manager for SunTrust, you know, ran a very successful operation there got promoted to a larger branch. And uh, it took me about a year because it's a huge learning curve, mind you, especially not having a day of banking experience in your life. Sure. So it took me about a year to halfway know what I was doing. And then by 16 months, I got bored just because, you know, again, being a branch manager, you're kind of chained behind a desk. And that's just not my personality. Yeah. So then, you know, through a networking event like we're at here tonight, um, met somebody from First Citizens and they offered me an opportunity I couldn't refuse. Very cool. Yeah, loving every minute of what I'm doing now. So do you get to go to a lot of networking events? I do. I do. That's pretty much my job, actually, is to uh, network. So out yeah. there just in the community and, again, helping people connect. And, you know, again, the nice thing about banking is helping people find the solutions. Right. You know. I think for a lot of people, especially small business owners and entrepreneurs and startups, the one of the no-brainer things that they we know we should be doing is networking. Have you learned any, like, secret sauce power tips that you would give to people about how to handle networking events? That's a great question. Yeah. So, I mean, networking is different for everyone. Um, You know, for me, it's always been about, you know, leading with a giving hand, giver's game. So when you come to a networking event, I mean, you want to find out about somebody, you know, find out what they do, what they do for fun, right? Don't always just make it straight about business. Yeah. And, um, you know, once you kind of break, build that rapport and everything else, you know, then it's how can I help you? You know, who would you like to meet tonight? Right. So I think if you take that approach, I mean, again. What are some of the approaches that like instantly have you looking for the exits? (laughs) When it's, hey, you know, can I give you my card? (laughs) And oh, by the way, this is what I like. Yeah. You know, those people you just want to kind of steer clear from. Right. And and hit the exit Mm -hmm. as quickly as possible. So how long have you been doing banking now? Uh, Two years, nine months. Two years, nine months. Nine months in my new gig. That's exciting. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. So uh, what's some of the exciting stuff you get to do in your new gig? So, um, well, it ha- again, just getting out, meeting all kinds of different types of people. Um, again, business owners, that's something I'm extremely passionate about because I did have my own business. So I understand the pain points, you know, the ups and downs. Um, so, and I'll tell you what I find with most bankers. I mean, again, you're talking to me and I'm very inexperienced at it, but they're order takers at best. You know, it's easy to serve a client when they come in and say, hey, Scott, I'd like to open up a checking account or, hey, Scott, I'd like to apply for a loan. Yeah. But what I really pride myself at is, is digging deeper and approaching the relationship holistically and um, helping find the unperceived need right. or identifying the emerging need. What's the one maybe product or service line that you guys offer that you just wish you could tell more small business owners about? Like if you knew this existed, it could really help you out. Yeah. So um, we help owners. You don't have to be a minimum time in business to um, get a business loan with us. So as long as you have a good enough you know, personal credit score, I can help you with working capital. So that could be an unsecured line of credit. Um, you know, if you use it, you pay for it just like you would on a credit card. But if you don't use it, you don't pay anything for it. Uh, we can do business term loans. So say, for instance, most business owners don't even know that business credit is a thing. So say you've racked up a lot of personal debt through credit cards and you have a business, we can actually basically do a business loan and take care of all that personal credit, you know, and get it off you personally. And so I imagine then it would probably have a 
a far superior rate of re- payback rather than a credit card as far as like an interest. Yes, yes, much yeah. much lower than what it what it would be. Yeah, see, I'm a business owner. I didn't know that existed. Did you there know you that go. existed? I did not know. No. Yeah. Well, and also too, I mean, the thing is, you you don't want to over leverage your personal credit because I mean, what if you find an investment property you want to purchase, or you know, again, you know, if you have a spouse, they're not going to enjoy that very much. So again, yeah, definitely keep keep business separate. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, what do you wish? Like, are there any are there any key processes or like disciplines that you wish you would have put in place sooner? As far as personal? Yeah, personally. Well, um, yeah, I mean, so I'll just tell you my story. So coming into banking with no banking experience, it really opened up my eyes. I mean, to be a good banker to my clients, I had to take a hard look in the mirror and my wife and I had to do a budget. So it's kind of like, and it was eye opening. I mean, it's like if we make this and of course we have our hard expenses, we have a mortgage, car payment, you know, you have your electricity, there's some controllables and non-controllables, but you know, we cut the cord. So, you know, we went from having every channel in America to just cutting it down to just internet only. Yeah. And so that saved us right there, $140 a month. And then as we started going through and cutting out vices, cause we all have vices. We also, we live paycheck to paycheck, but the reality is, you know, there's all things we can kind of trim the fat on. Sure. Now don't get me wrong. You want to grab for the gusto, which is what my father always says to do. So you don't want to be, you know, overly frugal, but by, you know, doing this and having, and my wife and I being more disciplined in our process and being accountability partners, you know, we now, because before we were maxing out the 401k, maxing out the IRA contribution, but now we're putting extra towards our mortgage payment each month. And now we're putting money in savings. And so anyway, budget is where I always start with my clients. You know, I understand what their debt structure is. You know, do they have an automatic savings plan set up? So to go back to what I wish I would have been more disciplined on is <laughs> I wish I would have known what I didn't know. Yeah. And I never met that right banker. Yeah. I guess I just didn't carry a large enough balance for anybody to really put my best interests first and really understand, you know, what I was trying to achieve financial financial yeah. wise. Well, if you're a business owner in the triangle, solopreneur, small business owner, how would they get in contact with you over at First Citizens? So um, my direct line at First Citizens is 919-716-7923, or they could email me at J Scott S C O T T dot rudder. R-U-T-T-E-R at FirstCitizens.com. Great. I have to ask you, so you mentioned recreation as a bonding point for relationships and networking. I love that. I love recreational connection. What do you do for fun? What is your what is your thing, Scott? What do you like to do? I'm an adrenaline junkie. Oh, parachuter, bungee okay, jumper, thing, mountain biker. Last thing I thought the banker would say. Yeah. I love a banker <laughs> who does that. Actually, all those things. So I grew up, um, you know, again, with a Honda 50, then got up to a CR80. Okay. Yes, two stroke genius. Had a Jixer 1000. Oh, God. I knew you were a motorcyclist. Then I got married and, you know, again, had a kid. My wife's like, time to, time yeah, to get yeah, rid of yeah. the bike. Right but there I, with I, you. But I'm still motorcycle endorsed. That's one of once per empty You can never leave it. Yeah, no. it's always a C, right? So That's do you think right. there's or the M, the M. What percentage of men in America do you think used to be motorcyclists that are currently have kids that are just waiting until their <laughs> wife will allow them to do it again? Well, start with me. <laughs> <laughs> right here, there you go. And that's fun. And then you, of course, ride a bicycle, right? I yeah. do. So two BMX. Wheels. Yeah, B- you have a BMX? Yes. A oh, sweet. Which what do you have? It's Redline. Oh, Redline. Mm-hmm. You're the man. So I used to do that too. Bungee jump, done that. Wow. Uh, did that in Acapulco and then get this. So um, in Lewisburg last year for my mom's 60th uh, birthday party, my mom and I jumped out of a plane. Really? Oh. And then my was that her up, idea or your idea? Her idea. Did she survive? She did. <laughs> oh, she did. Yeah. My wife was hoping I wouldn't survive. <laughs> so she's like, I wouldn't be not lucky enough for you to die. And then actually my only other time here in Fayetteville is we went to Zip Quest. So they have one of the best zip lining places in the country from what I'm told. I think they rank in the top 10. Okay. I don't know if you guys have checked that out. No. Zip Quest, unbelievable. Where is it? Uh, it's here in Fayetteville. Quest. It, uh, Zip Quest. Zip yeah. Quest. So I heard about it on Bob and the Showgram. And, and we did this. I mean, you're talking back when Jersey Shore was still going on. Okay. So, I mean, it must have been six, seven years ago that we were out here. But again, great time. Thank you, Scott, for joining us today. Yeah, yeah it was a lot of fun talking to you, man. Absolutely. Thanks, Thanks for yeah, having this me on is my great, This is a great event. Yeah, you're a great sponsor. Now, next time, you guys, but seriously, for kids, come to Rush Hour Carding. Check out my event. You know, again, it's at uh, Rush Hour Carding. Um, Adam is the best business owner in the world. Wait, yeah. tell us a little more about that. When is that? So the next event is going to be on October 17th. It's on Thursday and um, it's called Sphere Networking powered by Rockstar Connect. You know, 
we were able to raise $1,650 at our last event for um, the American Red Cross Where? to benefit the victims of Hurricane Dorian. Oh, that's awesome. Where is that rush guarding, rush, rush hour guarding? It's in Garner. So it's 5335 Rainer Drive. And that, you said kids. Do the kids drive or do you, they ride with you have to be. T- you have to be 10 years old. So these are legit racing they have, can the kids? Can a six-year-old ride with a adult? No. Nope. No, no, it's not like Frankie's. I mean, again, you right. have to actually be 10 years old to drive these. Right. They go anywhere from 45 to 55 miles an hour. But if I put a mustache Ooh. on my six-year-old, he could pass for a 16-year-old? <laughs> uh, well, there's, there, you don't even have the ability to actually. They only have the single single passenger carts. Oh, shoot. Yeah. So you'd have to give them some like you know tennis shoes that actually kind of raise them up somehow. I love it. So. I'll put my boy in heels and a mustache. There you <laughs> go. Yeah, he'll be fine. Thank you, Scott. You rock, man. Yeah, thank awesome. you, guys. Fun talking to you. Thanks, Scott. Absolutely. Forerunner Media is a creative agency helping you reach your strategic goals through content creation for social media and other platforms. Clients include Porsche USA, BMW Motorcycles, HH Hunt, the North Carolina Bankers Association, The Price Company, and Link Business, just to name a few. For every handful of satisfied paying customers, Forerunner Media does a project absolutely free for organizations who are doing good for their communities. Contact josh.manning at forerunner.media today for more information. Forerunner Media, your content creation partner. And we are excited to be sitting here with Kramer. Thank you so much for joining us. Happy to be here. We're at the World of Beer in Fayetteville. If you don't know about the World of Beer, you need to know about it. Kramer is here with us. Kramer, tell us a little bit about what you do and why you do it. I'm a commercial photographer, which means I take pictures for business and industry, and I do it because I started taking pictures every day since I was 13, and I don't know what else to do. Woo! <laughs> now, I just told by Stephen David Elliott came over and said, now, this guy's really humble, but he's a photographer for National Geographic. Yes, I've worked for National Geographic. Yes. That's awesome. What's your favorite stuff to photograph? I like photographing people and uh, landscapes, and uh, 30 years ago, I started photographing a seafood shack in the coast of South Carolina, and okay. that's probably my favorite subject I've ever photographed. I've been really? still shooting there now. Where uh, Has there been any other favorite locations that you've been sent by National Geographic to go shoot? Um, mainly North Carolina, mainly my home North Carolina? state, which I love dearly. Where were you born? I was born in Thomasville, Furniture City, in oh, the middle yeah. of the state. You were born on a kitchen table, baby. Not quite, <laughs> but oh. I did work in a furniture factory uh, with the sawdust to... Uh, uh, to get money to go to school to be a photographer. I love that. I was born in Winston-Salem, so awesome. we're kinder souls. Absolutely. Right on, brother. And have so, you been doing photography pretty solid since you were 13? It's always been a passion of yours? Pretty much every day. So and what per- point did it turn from a passion into a job? Uh, 18 when I decided to go to school to get formal training, and then I started working for a newspaper and a shot every day since then for what, a living. What wow. did making photographs do for you when you were 13? What did it do? What, what itch did it scratch? It's hard to say. I liked recording where I lived and my family, just the same things most every uh, 13-year-old does. Not every 13-year-old wants to record (laughs) where they live with their family. I I, I knew by 16 this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. That's inspiring. Yeah. I've been blessed to be able to do it as well. How was the transition from film to digital for you? It was pretty easy for me because I've always been a computer person, and digital photography is more about computing and all the things that go with it. Perfect. Than than anything else so you were like i hate the dark room i hate the dark room 10 years later you're like thank god for my desire for computers yes because i'm i've had enough of being in the dark room oh perfect perfect that's why you have the most complicated awesome camera the sony the sony mirrorless it's the best camera i've used oh uh, i'm not really a gear person but it is uh it's my favorite and what i get to use now well you are rocking this event as the event photographer here i've noticed you getting some great angles and this and that what do you look forward to most about what you're doing i just enjoy meeting the people and i enjoy kind of sneaking up getting candid photos there's always somebody i meet like you nice folks um who have an interesting career and that's um i never know what's going to happen that makes it fun so you fly a drone and you have that what's it called the part 107 certificate i have the, I have the part 107 but you FAA also you also are a real pilot or you fly airplanes is that correct? i'm a real pilot i fly Fixed wing airplanes, a part 91 pilot. So is there a stigma to, that real pilots have towards drones? Like, they not like them? A lot of them do not. The, is it because they don't think the drone pilots are being respectful and know what they're doing? No, I think part of it is because my pilot, my drone 
pilot's license says I'm a pilot. Oh. And my real pilot's license says I'm a pilot. So there's a little bit of professional jealousy. And it's I like, think, you're not a pilot. Exactly. You're flying a remote control. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you should be called operator and I should be called a pilot. But uh, I see. the FAA did not consult with me when they set those rules. <laughs> so I know for, for me, I've worked with a lot of clients that have been in the photography industry. And here's a complaint that I've been hearing that the market's getting flooded. Like everybody's buying a camera and they want to stick with it. And so people are dropping prices like crazy. How have you been able to stay making a living in photography? Have you noticed any big changes in the industry or has that not really affected you? I've observed that the best way to do it is find people that need more complicated photography and serve them well. Uh, people that really need good work will tend to pay for it. Yeah. And I'm going to do a food assignment. Not everybody can do that with the camera they just got from Best Buy. So that's a good example. Yeah. What's your What's your secret sauce? What's your recipe for food photography? No pun intended. Uh, light it well and um, make sure your point of focus is good. That's And that goes for everybody, even if you're just shooting your own yeah. food for Instagram. What kind of food makes you tempted to eat it the most? Seafood. Ooh. I think hard to photograph, but uh, hard to photograph, right? Yeah, I like I like most any type of seafood. That's awesome. What makes seafood hard to photograph? Is it because it's so glossy? That's part of it. It's just not intrinsically necessarily pretty. So yeah, it's, it's like not a, like a nice shiny steak. So uh, yeah, I tend to like hard subjects to photograph. That's just the way it works out. So is Red Lobster an ideal client for you? Uh, they would be if they call me. <laughs> well, North Carolina, South Carolina has a lot of fishing opportunities, right? We could. You could poke into that market? Yes, and that's uh, that's the way it's worked out. I've done some work down in Charleston in years past. What's your favorite coastal city? Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, that's my love. second second home. Love it. You got a second you got an apartment down there I can stay I in? I consider the no, I'm unfortunately I do not. I, <laughs> no, I wish uh, you'd be well invited if uh, if I did. My mom and sister are down there in James Island. That's it's a nice that's, place. That's um that's a great place. And get there a, as soon as you can. They best. got a cool historic downtown. Oh, best hush puppies in the world. Indeed. Absolutely. Well, Kramer, is there anything? How can people get in touch with you to uh, seek and use your services? They can go to my website, which is cgphoto.com, spelled correctly. <laughs> Spell it like I just spelled it. I love <laughs> it. Cgphoto.com. Right. Hey, Kramer That's awesome. Gallimore. Where's Gallimore come from? What's the history of that name? Uh, it tends to be uh, Northern England and uh, Scottish. You don't have a British accent. I do not have a Southern accent. I have a Piedmont, North Carolina accent. Uh, you don't have a British accent. No, I sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> My family's yeah. actually German. I don't have a German accent either. Holy Christmas. Indeed. Kramer, it's been good having Thank you Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Fantastic. It was great talking to you. Great talking to you folks. Thanks for all the great photos at this event. Do this stuff. Enos. Enos. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And Edith, you're with Keller Williams. Yes, sir. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, I'm a real estate agent. I work with uh, first time home buyers, investors. Um, I also just opened up my own property management company. So, Oh, cool. Congratulations. What's that called? It's called Oakview Property Management. So what made you want to get into property management? Um, when, I, when I first started off in real estate, that's what I was doing. Okay. I enjoyed it. So I um, just started doing it again as far as um, sales as well. So Okay. So uh, what, what makes you uniquely gifted and passionate to serve your customers? Like, why do you, what do you love about real estate? What I love about real estate is meeting people. Okay. Uh, communication, networking. Um, I love just talking to different people and helping them find their dream home. Yeah. I mean, I know how it was when I first bought my house and my kids running around, picking out their room and the color of their room. And that excites me to see other people's kids do the same thing. Yeah. So that's what I love about it. That's awesome. Yeah. Buying a home is such like such a part of the American dream. Like it's, it's, it's a huge investment. It's probably the biggest one most people make. So it's nerve wracking and having somebody that is good, that can help you and answer your questions is a big deal. Yeah. And, some, and somebody who knows the area as well as Enoch does, cause you know the area, right? Yeah. Yes. I've, um, I'm born and raised here. So yeah, so I know the area well, very well. And there's a ton of real estate agents yeah. out there. Oh yeah. What do you kind of know that separates you? Like what makes you unique? Um, what makes me unique is that I'm, I'm a people person. I love talking to people. <laughs> um, I love helping people. Yeah. And that's my biggest thing. I don't I don't go out and sell myself uh, something that I'm not. And I tell people all the time, you love Fayetteville. Don't hear about the story. Because a lot of people say, oh, Vietnam, we're more than that. Somebody so. just brought that up earlier. Fayetteville. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, what's that, that all about so. anyway? Where did that come from? 
<laughs> long story. <laughs> but we're more than that. So, right on. Yeah. There's so many different stories out there to know. You know, you if you got to be here to know what it is. Yeah, so. that's right. But we're, Fayetteville is a good city. Uh, we love our people. Mm -hmm. Home of the 82nd Airborne. Yes. So, yeah. I think that would be a big deal. That didn't occur to me until just now. Like, you would want your real estate agent to be born and raised in the city that you're shopping in. Yeah. That's big a deal. big deal. And it is because, I mean, who knows the area better than somebody that That's lives right. here? And yeah. that can tell you the area. So, What's the principles or practices that you use that you find really help you grow your business? Is to be honest. Be honest. Yes. I love that. Be honest. And, um... That's like period in the podcast. We just yeah, drop right the there. mics. <laughs> Be honest. All three of them. Let that heavy truth fall on the table. Boom. Yeah, and then <laughs> not to, I mean, to put your client's interest, best interest above yours. Yeah. So yeah. if That's you show awesome. to me, what I do is, is that I tell my clients, you know, this I want you to feel comfortable with your decision of the home that you purchase. Because at the end of the transaction, you know, we still communicate with them as far as, you know, um, keeping up with them and seeing how everything is going. But at the end of it, you're responsible for that house. You're responsible for the payment. So I want you to feel comfortable with the purchase that you made. What makes Fable great? We are a people that love and care about our, our um, visitors and um, and our city. Yeah. We take care of each other. I, would, I, would, uh, I got to work in a city outside of chicago for a while and it had a military base and there's something special about a town with a military base the the people that get to come through and serve they are they're in this kind of phase of life where they just they make instant connections because they're just open to it like like this is my city now i'm a part of it and they just jump right in do you find that to be the case here in Fayetteville? you guys have military base oh yeah 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 i mean my husband he's been here for 21 years pretty much his whole career and so he stayed and a lot of them do stay, you know, because they like the area and they like the um, hometown sense of it. And, you know, everybody is um, have grew up here with each other as far as junior high school, senior high school. And we just stay and, you know, help each other out. So that's awesome. And is when it's time for something, you know, to go on, we all pull together to help, you know, help our fellow uh, community. Right. Is your husband military? Uh, retired. Retired. Tell him thank you for his service from the guys who do stuff. I, I will. We appreciate you. Awesome. Enith, so you how, could, like, how can somebody uh, connect with you, Enith? If yeah, tell us. Um, they though. can call me at 910-758-4643 or they can email me at enith.homesweethome at gmail.com or they can go to my website, www.sellingfairville.com. That's awesome. It's been <laughs> a pleasure talking to you, Enith. Thank, thank you so much. You. Thank, thank you, Enith. Thank you. Thank you. We love making this stuff for you. You can help us out by subscribing wherever you get your podcasts. Get unstuck, tell a better story, and have a good answer to the question, what are you doing today?